What if I told you there's a way to run AI models completely offline with complete data privacy for zero dollars and you only need four gigabytes of storage to do so. So today I'm gonna to teach you how to host and run an LLM locally. And most people think they can't do this because they're not technical or because it's gonna you know take up too much processing power on their computer it literally only uses one gpu of processing power and four gigabytes of storage in almost every computer on the planet has those specs and so you can use this no matter what computer you have and you can basically run this completely on your computer save all of your data you're not giving your data to these ai companies anymore if you're using L local llms so today i'm going to show you exactly how to set that up so there's two different ways to do it and we're going to run through both of those today the first is using a tool called olama and olama is it will download it onto your computer and then you're essentially going to be running it inside of something called the terminal so this is what it's going to look like you'll be running it on the terminal and you can you know run it inside of here and basically have all of this completely you know utilized inside of the terminal now the other one is called lm studio um if you're a little bit less technical on the less technical side of things you're going to want to use lm studio it just looks a lot cleaner this is what i use for most of it i've been hosting both and have been using lm studio a lot more and so lm studio it basically looks like you know claude desktop or chat gpt but the models are completely hosted on your computer and all the data stays on your computer. And so without further ado, let's start with LM Studio and then we'll go to Onlama. So you're going to start by going to lmstudio.ai and then you're going to click download. Now, once once you've downloaded this model, the next thing you're going to do is you're going to, you know, open the DMG file, add it into your applications folder, just whatever you do when you're downloading new software. Um, and then you're going to open it up and it's going to look something like this. So you're going to see LM studio here, but if you try to do anything here, if I say like, hello, it says no model selected, select the model. And so that means this is where we have to download the models. So you're either going to go to this search button up in the top right or in the settings button in the bottom left. And then, you know, you're going to go to model search. So if you go click on the search button, this is model search. This will show you all the different models that you can download. You can see how many different models there truly are. Um, and I tend to go with the more recent ones. They tend to be better. So you can see like eight days ago, this one, um, and then Mistral AI, you know, and so let's say I want to download Mistral. That's 15 gigabytes. But if you want to use Gemma, this is the one that I use. If you want to use Gemma 3N E4B, this is only 4.88 gigabytes. And so what you're going to do is you're going to click on Gemma. I'm actually, I've already downloaded this, so I can't re-download it. But I'm clicking on Mistral here. But if you click on Gemma, what you'll do is you'll go down here and click on this download button. Once you click on this download button, it's just going to download the model onto your computer. And, you know, you'll just wait for it to download. Once it's finished downloading, you'll go back to the main area here inside of LM Studio. And you're going to click on select a model to load. And then once it's downloaded, it will automatically show on show up here. I'm going to click this and then I'm going to say, you know, what is the what is the nature of reality? And then boom, you can see now this model, Google Gemma 3N is automatically it's running. It's extremely fast and it's running entirely on my Mac so that. I'm not sharing this. None of this data is being shared with Google. None of this, you know, I can run this if I'm flying, you know, to another country and I have no Wi-Fi, I can still run and use this AI model. And so, you know, whether you're on an airplane, maybe you're in an apocalypse and the grid goes down and you want to figure out how to, <laughs> I'm just kidding. Um, whatever it is, whatever it is, you don't need Wi-Fi to run this, which is really cool. I find it really fascinating. And so now what we're going to do is we're going to set up, um, we're going to set up our other model. So I'm going to go back here to arc Olama. So the next one is Olama. This runs it entirely in terminal and it's a little bit more complicated, but not much. So you're going to go ahead and you're going to download Olama here. And so you're just going to click download. It's going to download this model. And then what you're going to do is you're going to open terminal on your computer. And so I'm going to open a new terminal here. And basically what you're going to do is you're going to run whatever model you want to run. And so how do we do that? Um, what you're going to do is you're going to go back to Olama. What is the website? Olama.com. You're going to click on models. 
you're going to see all the different models that we have access to here. Llama 4, Orca, Mini, Wizard. I didn't even know these were things. Lit Wizard, LM2, Dolphin, Mistral. So again, you can see when it was last updated. So usually I would go with the ones that are updated most recently. So let's say I want to do Gemma 3N. Then you'll see Gemma 3N and you can see how to run it. And so it's very, very simple. You're going to go Olama run and you're just going to copy this, right? Um, so whether you want E2B, E4B, whatever it is, um, you can see that it's, you know, pretty close to Gemini 1.5 Pro in terms of its capabilities. And I'm just going to go over here. So let's say I want to run E4B. I'm going to go back to my terminal. I'm literally just going to paste that in and I'm going to run it. And you're going to see it's going to show up like this polling manifest and then it's going to start downloading that model so you can see all right it's going to take me 30 minutes to download this model um and i'm actually going to um, stop this from downloading but you can see exactly how this is going to work it's going to you know download all of this on my mac and then once it's finished downloading it'll basically say like you know download complete and then once it's completed, it'll look like this. So there's like 100% here, 4.7 gigabytes, um, you know, writing manifest success. And then that's when you can start using it. And so now what you can do, if I were to create a new terminal here, once it's downloaded, anytime you open up the terminal, you run that same command, Olama run. And, you know, if I put this in here, you'll see this little loading window and then I'll see, okay, boom, find a message. You know, what is the nature of reality? And now I'm basically running an AI model directly here inside of my terminal. It's pretty freaking cool if you ask me. You know, I'm definitely, I'm going on a long uh, flight, long international flight in a couple months. And I'm definitely going to be using this the entire flight, just like, you know, doing reflections, journaling, whatever. One of the things I like about this is, you know, some of the things that you ask AI models are pretty sensitive and they train, you know, all the data that you give an AI model it uses it to train. And so, you know, if I'm going to be journaling, you know, sometimes I use AI to like my deepest thoughts of my psyche and my deepest vulnerabilities and my, the things I'm grappling with emotionally and psychologically, these are not necessarily things that I want to give these models. And so if I can full, have full confidence, which we can, you know, setting it up in this way, that all this data is being stored on my computer and nowhere else, not on random servers somewhere being trained on all the AI models. I can, you know, do therapy with an AI model. I can do deep self-reflection and not worry about my deepest thoughts being, you know, leaked to random cloud servers somewhere. Or, you know, maybe you're trying to do something sensitive. Maybe your company says you can't use ChatGPT because they have sensitive, you know, information that they don't want to you know, leak, then, you know, use LM studio and, and make sure that it, and then everything is hosted on your computer. And so that's the fundamentals of how to set up a local LM. It's really not as hard as it seems. These are the two most common ways to set it up. I actually prefer LM studio because I actually like the kind of interface. I actually like the interface here. I think it looks really clean. And I just like how it seems more like Claude or ChatGPT and not like in the terminal. Some people like that like developer hacker feel of doing everything inside of the terminal. So to each their own. Um, but thank you so much for watching this. I hope this inspired you to go set up your own local LM and I'll see you in the next video.